Over the course of my life, I've been to a lot of places. Shadowed places where things have gone wrong. Sinister places where things still are. I always hate the sunlit towns. Full of newly built developments with double car garages and shades of pale eggshell. Surrounded by green lawns and dotted with laughing children. Those towns aren't any less haunted than the others. They're just better liars. Celestia's Game, Chapter 2 Better? What could be better than... Pinky started, only to get cut off by her purple alicorn friend once again. Shush, Twilight chided, causing the pink pony to go tight-lipped. Well, wholeheartedly, I do not have a very pleasant and melodious name for this fascinating game. However, I would be able to explain the rules. Sorry, princess. I'm not very interested. Dash started, only to get cut off. Rainbow, would you just let me do the talking? Twilight shouted in a whisper, pulling out a nervous smile at the end of her sentence. We would certainly be interested, Twilight replied in a courteous manner. Very well, then. But I must warn you, this game takes place in a quite dangerous habitat. Anyway. The rules are fairly simple, to say the least. The alicorn started. You die, you lose. You survive, you win. That's it? Dash cackled. Piece of cake! But, what if I told you murder was an option? Her majestic voice filled the hollow room. In fact, it's completely mandatory. Not so easy now, is it? Princess Celestia gave them her characteristic smile, almost sending shivers down the main six's spine. What, what do you mean? Fluttershy muttered with fear. I assume you'd want me to inform you the rules in depth. Well, you six will be separated in a forest, which most ponies don't know of. A magical force field will be securing the area, making sure you won't get any ideas of escaping. In the middle of the forest, there will be a cornucopia, consisting of food, clean water, weapons, and so on. Weapons? Why in Equestria would we need weapons? Applejack asked. Were you not listening to me? I suppose it is your loss, but it's quite self-explanatory, isn't it? The white alicorn replied, quite choleric with the question. As I was saying, the cornucopia will also provide a comfortable area which provides a bed, shower, and so on. However, the items I mentioned before are quite limited. So, will you be generous with the items, or will you keep them all to yourselves? She informed, with a rhetorical question shooting Rarity a quick and fierce gaze. Any questions? She queried making an awkward silence fill the room until some pony broke it. But why? Pinkie Pie asked. I need you to be more specific, my pink pony, she informed. Why are you doing this? Twilight helped her usually cheerful friend finish her sentence. That's an invalid question, isn't it? Anymore? What do we get in return? Rarity asked. Quite fatigued as she tried to comprehend all the information given beforehand. Ah, yes, the prize. It's quite grand, actually. I shall make you an alicorn if you win. As for you, Twilight, I shall make you much stronger in terms of mentally and physically. Much like me. A good deal, is it not? An alicorn? Rarity asked, seeming as if she was interested. Yes. Furthermore, you'd be a princess, Celestia added, nodding. A uh, princess? Rarity mumbled to herself. Rarity had always wanted to live the royal life. Just imagined all the jewels and gems she'd owned. Not to mention the dresses and accoutrements. She'd certainly be a wonderful princess, wouldn't she? But on one condition. If Applejack wins, she'd be known as the Princess of Dishonesty. Fluttershy would be known as the Princess of Cruelty. Pinkie Pie would be known as the Princess of Despair. 
Rarity would be known as the Princess of Greed, and Rainbow would be known as the Princess of Treachery. This is because I believe you would, without question, have these traits if you win. Twilight, instead of being the Princess of Friendship, you'd simply be the Princess of Magic if you win. Understand, she announced, pointing to each one of them as the six mares exchanged their fearful and trepidatious looks. Oh, and how could I possibly forget my assistant in subord... Celestia started, only to be interrupted by the sound of a door creaking open. Standing there was a tall and, some would say, fearsome figure. Frightened, the six mares stared, waiting for the ravishing mare to come into the light. Celestia's Game, Chapter 3 T Tia? She called as she stared in dismay at the scene with a gasp. Ah, if it isn't my dear sister Luna. Why so surprised? She asked with a slight sinister smile. You... I thought I told you never to do this again. You promised me! Ah, well that's what you don't get, my lovely sister. Promises are meant to be broken, and you certainly wouldn't expect me to keep the promise. After all, only an absolute imbecile would think so, she stated. But you wouldn't do that with them, would you? Luna questioned, giving the six ponies a worried glance. Is there a problem to do so? Of course! They're the elements of... That's enough. I must stop you before you start to pointlessly rant. Now, if you don't mind... I need you to go away, Celestia informed, avoiding eye contact with her sister. But get out, she growled, fiercely as her lilac eyes turned into a shade of fire red. Her golden outfit started to glow, or somewhat burn, making her sister quake and quiver in slight dread as she backed away in slow steps. However, Luna wasn't going to give up that easily. Although Celestia had done countless unspeakable things to her and every pony else, she cared very much for her. She was her sister, after all. It was finally Luna's time to be the big sister for once. She stood straight with a confident expression. I shall not tolerate your attitude. Stop this. All of this. I won't take no as an answer. As all she was about to say before magical aura enveloped her. With such force, she felt herself forced out of the room. Excuse my sister. She was being silly, was she not? Let us continue. She stopped, mid-sentence due to countless loud knocks. <sighs> what is it now? She mumbled to herself. Open the door, Luna screamed with frustration, continuing to send many more hits to the metal door. Celestia took a deep breath before saying, Excuse me, girl. I suppose I have to get rid of this pest to proceed in our conversation. Calmly, she exited the room, closing the door and eliminating all light that was once in the room. Her sister stood before her. What's your... You can't do this, Tia, she warned. And why is that? Celestia queried in return. Because it's simply wrong. You know what happened last time. And this time it's the elements of harmony? You can't do such a thing, she added. I must disagree, she disagreed, shaking her head. I believe it's a wonderful idea, Luna. To see six best friends battle to the death, I believe it'll test their friendship. It'll be somewhat of an experiment, not to mention it'll be simply delightful to see their deaths. You... You've gone insane! No, I have not. You, or neither have, may have. She denied. But think of the consequences, Luna persuaded. Consequences? Well, I certainly don't see anything negative towards me. Now please leave me be. You're wasting my precious time. No! The Princess of the Night growled, tugging on the Celestia's wavy mane. Luna, let go of my mane. No, I... She felt Celestia's mane slip from her grip. What is wrong with you? You weren't this mad last time, Celestia shouted. That's because it was your first time. Plus, you didn't do it on your own. And the fucking elements of harmony? Now, did you? If you're so interested in death, 
Then why don't you just... just... just go kill yourself? She explained, hesitating to say the last few words. Well, that seems racist of you, and I certainly didn't expect you to say that. Furthermore, curse while you're at it. You are royalty, after all. We don't tolerate such language. Anyway, every pony should be treated fairly. No matter who they are. As for your last sentence, well, I'm not interested in feeling pain myself, at least, not yet. After all, death shall come for me soon enough. I'm much more interested in the pain and agony of others, Celestia replied. Ugh, it doesn't matter. You need to stop, Tia. And if you aren't going to, I'm willing to stop you, she threatened as she blocked the door to the room Twilight and her friends were situated. You against me. What a chip, she started with a chuckle, only to get interrupted by a heavy and slightly sharp object bashing her head. What did you- The white alicorn placed her hoof against her head, which had a bloody gash. You. I- I'm- s Sorry. Was all Luna was able to say. And that wraps up chapter 2 and chapter 3 of Celestia's game. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed. Stay safe, stay golden, and shine bright my stars. Deuces.